Welcome back everybody to the retrograde right here on Dead Jester Cinema. What is the retrograde? Well, I'm gonna go through an old movie and then when it's all done, I'm gonna break that movie down into four categories, plot, characters, direction, and music. And I'm gonna assign a letter grade to each of those categories. And then when that's all done, I'm gonna take all those grades and combine them to one overall grade for the entire film. And on this edition of the retrograde, we're gonna look at the 1996 sequel to Children of the Corn, Children of the Corn 4, The Gathering. Yeah. The film opens up on a young boy who stops by Karen Black's house asking for help. But something strange is afoot and Miss Black senses that there is something not right about this boy. And her suspicions are confirmed as he starts freaking out on her like a prodigy music video. But she wakes up because the whole stupid intro was just a dream. Oh my, we are off to a stellar start. The real film opens up with Grace, played by Naomi Watts, returning to her home of Gatlin and oh, oh no, I'm, I'm sorry, Grand Island, Nebraska. God, I didn't know there were any islands in Nebraska. But anyway, Grace is returning home from college to take care of her agoraphobic mother, June, and her two siblings, James and Margaret. The town doctor, Dr. Larson, explains to Grace her mother's mental situation before promising to give Grace her old job back at his clinic. And oh yeah, he also sets up a plot device for later on that June never leaves her yard and never steps foot beyond her own sidewalk or some shit. And if you're expecting an interesting or even remotely cool payoff to that, don't hold your breath because this is Children of the Corn 4 after all. Later on that evening, Private Ryan breaks into an old barn looking for some water to drink. Not sure why as you got some perfectly good hooch in that bottle there, Private. Anywho, our villain this time around, Josiah, is hanging out at the bottom of the well, and there is no saving Private Ryan today as Josiah does his best Samara impression, climbs out of that well, kills him, and then uses his blood in a ritual to gain control over the children in town. And immediately all the children in town start coming down with a mysterious fever, and as Grace and Doc Larson struggle to find answers, Josiah does more spell work, causing the fevers to worsen. But they eventually stop, but they leave the children changed. And I'm just checking in on you guys out there. You good? You hanging in there? Okay, we're gonna keep going. The next night as Marcus and his parents are packing to move, the town children led by Josiah, who you never actually see, stop over to give them a nice little going away present by killing Marcus's mother. And later on as Marcus's father Brent, played by discount Louis Gossett Jr., tries to plead his innocence to the police, Marcus takes off into the cornfield followed closely by the town sheriff. The sheriff chases Marcus to a clearing where the boy tosses the officer a burlap sack with Private Ryan's head in it, which is Josiah's cue to jump out and impale the man from behind with a scythe. Upon hearing the screams, Brent and the other officers race into the cornfield, and when Brent stumbles upon the body of the sheriff, he does the only smart thing to do in that situation, and that's haul ass. And yeah, after already being suspected of murdering your wife, this recent turn of events is not going to bode well for you. But, you know, he was standing next to that officer the entire time, so maybe there's a chance they don't think he did this and he didn't need to run? That night, Grace is awoken by Margaret, who starts turning into Freddy Krueger, and... Oh, oh, nope, that was just a dream, apparently. Well, anyway, Grace wakes up and... Oh, for fuck's sake. Anyway, that night, twin boys Charlie and Scott are brought by their mother to Doc Larson, because they are acting weird and refuse to answer to their given names, choosing instead to go by Zeke and Caleb. Doc agrees to keep them overnight for whatever reason, and he tells their mom to leave and get some rest when, okay, I, I guess forget that scene. Oh no, no, we're right back. The doc starts giving a history lesson to the two boys and tells them he remembers the name of Zeke and Caleb from when he was younger, twin boys who were murdered by their father. And after threatening them with corporal punishment via their mother, Scott reiterates that there is no Scott, only Zeke. And they, oh, Never mind, I guess. My god, the editing in this is so good. After that superfluous detour with Grace, the twins start tormenting Doc Larson, who now looks like he's going to do some wholesale ass-whipping of his own. But the boys trap the Doc in a hallway, and with nowhere to go, the Doc is cut in half, and... <laughs> oh, beautiful effects work there. 
Later on, Grace shows up to the clinic to analyze a blood sample she took from Margaret earlier, and wow, the twin boys must be expert cleaners because there isn't a spot of blood or a hint of Doc Larson anywhere. It's here where she is confronted by Brent, who reasserts his innocence and clues her in to whatever is going on with his son Marcus is happening to all the children in town, and none of them are safe. Back at home, June's reoccurring nightmare from the beginning of the movie is now happening for real, so she runs out of the house and after being frightened by some really shitty 90s editing effects, she steps off her sidewalk and drives away. Yep, there's a shitty non-payoff I warned you about earlier. It's around this time Margaret pulls out a tooth. That's important for later, so we'll get back to that. But back to June, who is driving to God knows where, where she spots her son James ducking into an old barn. And when she goes to investigate, she is attacked by more shitty editing and is killed off screen. Meanwhile, back at the clinic, the shit has really hit the fan as all the parents in town are bringing in their sick children. And since Doc Larson is KIA, Grace and her friend Marianne assume caregiver duties. Grace notices something very wrong with all the blood samples from the children, so she decides to leave Mary in charge so she can try to find Doc Larson. When Brent arrives, forcing Grace to leave her sister at the clinic and help him out. And way to be subtle there, Brent, with the shotgun in broad daylight. I mean, there is still a police force in town hunting your ass down. Brent takes Grace to the two old ladies he's been hiding out with, whose names are Backstory and Exposition. And they drop some Josiah lore on Grace that he once was a child preacher who made all the adult preachers a lot of money. So in order to keep him a child, they tried stunting his growth by depriving him of sleep and feeding him Quicksilver? Because that plan seems perfectly legit. However, after that obviously failed, the preachers gave him up to the darkness or whatever, and the townsfolk learning of this killed the preachers and burned Josiah alive in the cornfield, then took his bones and ashes and dumped them down a well. Damn, that's pretty friggin' hardcore. But he has returned having found the like child who was abandoned like he was so he can use her body to be reborn. And that's when this movie drops its pants and exposes the big old cliche that Margaret is not Grace's sister, but in fact her daughter that she abandoned years ago. Oh, now it all makes sense. I think? Back at the clinic, Marianne is running some tests on the blood samples, but she is left by herself in a horror movie and she's not the main actor, so you know what that means. Yep, time to die. And really stupidly too, I might add. Soon after, Grace and Brent return to the clinic discovering Margaret to be missing, but they also discover Marianne's tests, and Grace realizes that the blood is reacting negatively to the mercury in Margaret's fillings, so she and Brent hatch a plan. Meanwhile, back at the old barn, all the children have gathered to offer up their blood to Josiah, and Margaret offers up her soul and jumps into the bloodbath, and moments later, Josiah supermans out of that shit fully resurrected. Wait a second. He's already kind of doing a bang-up job already. I mean, he's already out and about, killing people, doing his thing. Why the need to be resurrected? But Grace and Brent have showed up to crash Josiah's party as they dump a bunch of Miracrome, I think that's what it's called, into the barn sprinkler system. Inside, Brent finds his son who has passed out from blood loss and takes him out to his truck to help. But the kids see Marcus is missing, so they leave the barn to retrieve him. Meanwhile, Grace is looking for Margaret, but she finds Josiah instead. And in typical slasher fashion, she then finds all the bodies of all the previous victims just hanging out. Anyway, Josiah and Grace have their final showdown, and when it looks like Grace is screwed, she shoots the sprinkler pipe next to her, dousing Josiah in all that glorious mercury-filled water, killing him and freeing the children from their zombie-like state. I'm melting! Melting! Oh, what a world! What a world! Grace finds Margaret, who died in the pool of blood, but uh, nope, nope, I'm just kidding, she's alive. Yay! Later, the quintet of Grace, James, Margaret, Brent, and Marcus all visit the cemetery to pay their respects to June and Marcus's mother. I, I wish they could pay their respects to my soul that just died watching this thing. But anyway, James kills a bug, bringing this movie to a close. And that was Children of the Corn 4, The Gathering. Oh boy, let's just get this shit over with and toss it on over to the retrograder. I'm giving the plot a D-. minus. And that's being generous, because what plot is there really here to speak of? And what little plot that there is can be summed up with one word. Why? I mean, yes, we know the plot is to resurrect Josiah, but 
Why? Now, granted, these movies all really revolve around the same basic plot of kids killing adults in the name of he who walks behind the rose, but he isn't mentioned once throughout this entire film, so again, why is all of this happening? And why the need to be resurrected at all? Why are the souls of dead children inhabiting the bodies of living ones? This movie just leaves a lot of shit unexplained and it's frustrating. And don't even get me started on the whole Margaret X. Grace's daughter revelation and how annoyingly convenient that is. But that's really about it for the plot. I mean, I wish I had more to elaborate on, but you can't make something out of nothing and you can't polish a turd. I'm giving the characters a C-. Despite this film's lack of an engaging narrative, I don't think the characters are really that bad. Naomi Watts is head and shoulders above anyone in this movie, and you can see why she would go on to become a star later on in much, much better films. In the hands of lesser talent, this role could have floundered, but if there was one reason to ever watch this thing, I would say it's for her performance. Now let's be real, I'm not saying it's Oscar worthy or anything like that, but she does barely and I mean barely, hold this thing together. Brent, played by Donald Adkins, is a decent side character, and I'm not kidding when I say he is a discount Louis Gossett Jr. His appearance, his delivery, his cadence, everything is just spot on, and it makes me wonder if they wrote the role with him in mind. Karen Black, who I usually love in horror movies, just doesn't have much to do here. Plus, the plot point of her not traveling beyond her front porch just evaporates with no real great payoff. And as per usual, none of the children really stand out, which seems to be the running theme now in these films after the original. Plus, this movie lacks a real impactful villain, which brings us right around to Josiah. The movie tells us he is a force to be reckoned with, but again, why is he? The movie makes a big deal about him, but the methods behind his madness aren't revealed until almost the very end, and it's an extremely generic revenge reasoning to boot. Plus, we never spend any real time with him to really feel his presence. Unlike the villains of the previous three films, Josiah bounces in and out to kill people most of the time, and you really don't see him doing it. And then once he's done, he's gone for long stretches. And once again, without a clearly defined villainous plot beyond just being resurrected, I just find myself not giving a shit. Plus, I never understood the resurrection aspect to villains' plots like this. It's the same kind of problem I had with Freddy Krueger. In a sense, you are more powerful and accomplishing a lot more as a spectral entity so why not just stay that way? Like, in my opinion, becoming human is like taking two steps backwards. The direction gets a D plus. Hey, if there's one positive I could bestow upon this movie, it's that it didn't reuse any shots from the previous ones. Beyond that, the direction is pretty average to poor. It suffers from the same shit that plagued the previous film, bizarre shot choices and weird camera angles. But what hurts this movie more than those dubious direction choices are the extremely cringy and dated editing effects. They are just so bad and it really takes you out of the movie. A lot of it is done to create a cheap scare, but it ends up having the reverse effect and you find yourself kind of just laughing at it instead of being scared. I'm giving the music a C-. It's not bad but it's really not that good either. It's pretty standard as far as horror movies go. My biggest complaint is that it just feels very stock and generic. It lacks a unique identity, like you could have just taken the score to this and dropped it over any other horror movie and it would have probably worked just as well, if not better. Man, I miss Jonathan Elias. And with those four grades combined, that brings the cumulative score up to a 67% and once again, not going to round up, not going to round down because this movie is just kind of straight up ass, which means Children of the Corn 4, The Gathering has an overall grade of a D plus. My overall consensus is that this movie is just boring. In comparison, Children of the Corn 2 was so corny that it was fun, no pun intended. And Children of the Corn 3 was bad, but it still had a watchability to it. However, Children of the Corn 4 is just the worst kind of bad, and that's boring bad. Because nothing really happens, there is no plot escalation and no real stakes to be invested in. There are characters that you either barely or don't give a shit about, and a barely existent villain that the movie tries to heap importance onto. 
but one that ultimately misses the mark completely. There is the very germ of an interesting idea underneath all of this crap, and I can respect that they were trying to expand the lore, but much like the last movie, they just add shit without properly connecting the dots to anything that came before. So it really comes off like each new movie is erasing and starting over and doing it worse each time. Anyways, that's it for this video, kids. That was Children of the Corn 4, and my god, it was it was pretty rough to get through. Uh, if you have seen it, what are your thoughts on it? Did I grade it fairly? Should I have graded it higher? Should I have graded it lower? Uh, please post your comments in the comment section below. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Adios, and GTFO!